Welcome to the final days. Today is March 6, 2019. Today we will be viewing solar eclipses, a helium-4 dark nebula full of opaque dust very near Earth, and an asteroid in a decaying orbit around Earth, none of which is discussed by mainstream media. The purpose of this channel is to show viewers that we are living in the very last days according to the Holy Bible, and to explain why this is actually good news and cause for celebration explain later in this video. The images we are viewing were obtained over the past few days from the Federal Aviation Weather Cameras in Alaska and Canada. Each image is 10 minutes apart from the next, and they form a time-lapse video when strung together, such as the one playing now, taken from cameras in different locations throughout Alaska. The black dot in front of the sun is equipment that NASA launched hundreds possibly thousands of miles from the Earth's surface. It casts a reflection upon the water, proving that it's not a camera or lighting issue, but it's an actual piece of equipment, and it's viewed from many different cameras. The reason we usually don't see the black dot from the lower 48 states is because our skies are heavily chemtrailed, and also we're at a different angle uh, compared to the equipment out there. This black dot equipment is capable of producing an enormous glare, hundreds of miles in diameter, possibly thousands of miles. It always tracks in perfect synchronization with the sun. So essentially, the circular glare is always between Earth and the sun, but much closer to the Earth, of course. Jesus is describing the last days in Luke chapter 21 verse 25 when he says that we will see these signs in the sky there is nothing special about this old video from portage glacier alaska a year ago the sun is seen passing behind a post the importance of these frames is that we are looking at the real sun notice how the sun passes behind a post and the post cannot hide the sun because the real sun is too large to be hidden behind a small post I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. You'll see in a moment why this is important. Here's an interesting sign in the sky viewed from the west-facing camera in Burwash in the Yukon Territory. We see what looks like the sun, but it's not. As it passes behind a thin post, it completely disappears from view. The reason this is happening is because the light source we are viewing is the glare produced by the black dot equipment that reflects upon the water surface. Where's the real sun? It is currently behind a dark nebula that we will be looking at in just a minute. To refresh your memory on the approximate size of the real sun, here is an inset of the real sun we just saw moments ago in Portage Glacier. The real sun could never be hidden behind a thin flagpole. We see the same phenomena occurring in Drumheller, Alberta in Canada. The light source is seen traveling across the sky, and then it is completely hidden behind a tiny street light. Just to refresh your memory <clears throat> on the size of the sun again, here's an inset from Portage Glacier. The real sun could never disappear behind a street light. Now that you know how the manufactured light works, it will help you to understand the dark nebula we are viewing in this footage from the south-facing camera in Attawapiskat, Ontario in Canada. Notice how bright everything is as the sun rises over on the left. Then suddenly the sun appears to shrink to one-fifth its size. That's because the real sun has just gone behind the dark nebula, and the manufactured glare is now in front of it. However, the artificial light is no match for the real sun because it almost looks like nighttime. The large triangles are used to obscure the image and are not produced from within the camera like a lens flare is. We know this because sometimes clouds are in front of the triangle. Clouds can never be in front of a camera-produced lens flare. Eventually, the real sun emerges from behind the nebula, and the landscape suddenly brightens, and the sun returns to its normal size again. Let's run through this again. The sun rises on the left. The landscape is bright. 
The sun suddenly shrinks to one-fifth its size, causing the landscape to darken as the real sun moves behind the uh, dark nebula. The manufactured glare moves across the sky in front of the helium-4 dark nebula. Notice the amazing texture of the nebula as the light moves across it. It would be wonderful to be able to get a closer look at this structure. The light passes over the nebula, tracking in perfect synchronization with the sun. The landscape suddenly brightens as the real sun emerges from behind the nebula and the sun resumes its normal size again. This is another biblical sign of the end of the age described by Jesus in the New Testament. A total eclipse is occurring here, viewed from the southeast facing weather camera located in Ugonic Bay, Alaska. At 10 a.m. the sun is coming up on the left. The black dot equipment emits a black beam in preparation for the eclipse. As the manufactured glare approaches the two orbs, it illuminates them. Technology is in place to blur these objects. Some contrast helps to see these two celestial objects. We know these cannot be lens flares because the manufactured light is actually reacting to these objects. Notice how the glare reaches out toward the orb. These objects are between the sun and the earth. Thus, when this eclipse occurs, the manufactured circular glare stays in front of the celestial object while the real sun passes behind it just like it did in the nebula we just saw a moment ago. This process successfully conceals a total eclipse. The enemies of Christ do not want you to know we are close to the end. They do not want you to turn your life over to Christ while there is still time. Information is at the end of this video that tells you how to turn your life over to Christ. The same thing is happening on the camera in Willow, Alaska. We know this cannot be a lens flare because the manufactured light once again reacts to it. Light can never react to a lens flare which is produced from within the camera. These are just more of the signs and wonders of the last days described by Jesus in the Bible. Now that you know how the manufactured light works, you will understand in this footage why the asteroid that we're going to be looking at appears to go behind the sun. We are going to view the asteroid as it appeared late in March last year, and we're going to compare with how it looks now, nearly a year later. Here is last year's footage from the military base in Anchorage, Alaska. These are the original images, and the asteroid is very faint. If your screen has good contrast, you'll be able to see it. To make it easier, here are some arrows pointing to the asteroid as it passes over the skies of Alaska late last March. And for anyone who might be having trouble seeing it, here are some images with contrast applied. Again, the contrast works much better if only applied where needed and not over the entire image. Showing this asteroid last year got me banned from the FAA weather cameras, they thought. Just in case anyone is still having trouble seeing it, I've traced around the asteroid in, uh, in the frames of these images. This asteroid is in orbit around Earth and can be seen flying by every single day at approximately the same time. The asteroid flies behind NASA's manufactured light, but not behind the Sun, which is 93 million miles away. An asteroid 93 million miles away would never be visible to a camera or binoculars and not even to most home telescopes. Here are some five-day-old images of the asteroid from March 1st. The sun is lower because it's three weeks earlier in the month than the asteroid uh, images we just viewed a minute ago.
The visibility is not as good because the Alaskan skies are now covered with atmospheric chemicals that produce a milkiness throughout. In case your screen doesn't have sufficient contrast to view the asteroid, the red arrows are marking its path. And if you're still having trouble seeing it, even with the arrows, here are some images with contrast. For anyone interested in downloading all these original FAA images from last year and this year, I've placed a compressed file of 85 JPEGs at the URL yourluckyday.net slash asteroid.zip. I apologize that the comments are turned off. Last year when I showed these sky images, call centers were actually hired to leave thousands of hostile and profane comments, which required many hours of work to block continuously. And here is this year's asteroid close up with some contrast. As you can see, it is noticeably larger this year than last year. In just a couple minutes we're going to look and see exactly how much larger it is. I've smudged out the sun in these size comparison images and please forgive my bad artwork. The black circles are last year's asteroid I actually traced around the images in the frames, and the red circles are this year's. Of course, where the sun was in the center of the photo and the asteroid appeared to go behind it, I had to estimate the asteroid's location in just a couple frames. But the rest of these circles were drawn around the actual image of the asteroid as it passed through the Alaskan skies. I'm not an astronomer, but I did learn in elementary school science that the closer an orbiting object becomes, the bigger it looks. These images show a simple mathematical size comparison. Here's last year's asteroid. I traced around it with a digital pencil. And then I added the horizontal lines at the top and the bottom of the asteroid. Last year's asteroid is 57 screen pixels in height. And here is this year's asteroid. I did the same thing by drawing a circle around it and adding the horizontal bars at the top and the bottom. And the height of this year's asteroid is 73 screen pixels. The asteroid is 28 percent larger than it appeared last year. The asteroid looks bigger, it is closer. Our childhood science class tells us that it is in an unstable, decaying orbit. I'm not an astronomer, but it's easy to see that this asteroid is most likely many miles in diameter at a minimum. Please click on the thumbs up so that this video shows up in searches for others needing this information. This article by InsideScience.org, like many other science articles, tells us that the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was only seven to eight miles wide. The asteroid we are seeing here is no doubt much, much larger in order to actually be seen with the naked eye through daytime atmosphere. Our world leaders will have no choice but to try to break it up with explosives. If they are successful, pieces will fly unpredictably. Our Bible's book of Revelation describes two such objects falling to earth and causing upheaval during the time of the Great Tribulation. This approaching planetary system that we've been seeing will make its closest pass during the Great Tribulation, which is nearly upon us. However, no one knows the precise day that the Great Tribulation will begin, but Christ commands us to watch for these signs so that we are not ignorant of the very late hour in which we are living. Approaching the last days is cause for celebration for faithful followers of Jesus Christ because he is removing from earth those believers who are living in holiness. 
This is commonly called the rapture, which will take place quickly and quietly just before the dawn of the Great Tribulation. The New King James Version of Luke chapter 21 verse 36 reads, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Jesus is referring to the Great Tribulation. He is saying that those who are counted worthy will escape all of God's wrath. To be counted worthy, we must be living in holiness. A link below in the description box discusses what holiness is and how to achieve it. In these next few screens, they will tell you how to accept Christ into your life in the event you are seeking Him. Simply pause the screen if you need more time to read the text. In our next video, we will take a look at one of the other signs of the final days, as described by Christ in the New Testament. Thanks everyone for watching.